Hello. Hola. Bonjour. Ni hao. Moi. <laughs> Salut. Guys, whatever way you want to say it, welcome to the Normal Not Normal podcast with myself, Oliver Phelps. And me, James Phelps, and thank you for joining us this week, everybody. And today we have some more of your story times, your questions, and your did you knows, my personal favourite. And after last week's episode, we realised that it was our 15-year anniversary of the very first episode of Skins. So don't miss our chat from last week with April Pearson, who played Michelle in the show. Exactly. So anyway, James, what have you been getting up to this week? Anything, anything fun and enjoyable? Well, it depends what you call fun and enjoyable. I've been very nerdy. I got a new toy for my telescope. And so, asked, so I've been sitting on my roof. And uh, basically, I've got this device which you put in your tripod and you line it up with the North Star Polaris because that doesn't really move that much if you look at it in the night sky, right? Mm -hmm. And so you line it up with that. So that will always keep track of where the North Star is. So then you put your camera on the other side and that will track the other constellations moving across the sky. So I've been trying to get photos of Orion this week. And did you? I did, but I'm still learning on how to do... Like Basically, the, you know when you see really fancy deep sky photography? You see like all the nebulas and everything. That's just that's not just one photo. That is literally three, three, four hours of someone taking photos in different ways, all put together and then put onto Photoshop and all that kind of stuff. So my level of excitement during a rain-filled weekend was um, pretty much sitting... <laughs> Sitting watching some people on YouTube show me that. That's how exciting my life has wow. become on rainy days. What about well, you? Have, have you got to anything even more exciting than that? Even more exciting than that, I uh, I played a bit of golf. I right. saw some friends. Um, yeah, that's about that's about as much as it went really. And I had a really cool um, cameo calls actually last week, where I spoke to lots and lots of different people from all over the globe, who uh, many of which send their regards to everyone else listening to the podcast. And I did hear a couple of things. So the first one was from uh, Alina in Russia, who actually gave me a nice speech about her rant appreciation. And she was saying how it just, yeah, yeah, how it, how it almost made it okay for her to just have a little rant. And I said, make sure you do it to yourself, though, sometimes, not in just general public if you're on the bus or something. But it was really nice to hear that. And she wanted to know why I don't rant too much on this season. And I got me thinking, I thought, I don't know why. Maybe I'm doing it a bit more private these days. I don't know. Do you think place. I'm, do you, I think maybe that's it. Maybe that is because I'm in a happy place, yeah. Or maybe it's a case of where sometimes you just think to yourself, yeah, I'll kind of, Go around it. I think it's a way of just dealing with things, isn't it? So I, I played golf actually on Saturday morning and I had one of those rounds. I played well, but everything didn't go correct. Basically, if it went in a bunker, it was plugged. So the ball was under the sand. So you can't actually get a decent shot in it. Um, if there, there was mud on the ball, so then if I hit the ball, it would shoot off another way because the mud changes the way it flies. Uh, if, it, if I hit on the fairway, I ended up in a divot somewhere. Everything went wrong, but... You just had to accept that this is one of those days. Smile, laugh, and move on. And I think that's kind of a good way of going around life. How's that? There you go. It's a good idea. It's a good idea for it, I suppose. Um, yeah, so as I say, so that, was, that, was, that was very nice. So if you are going through something where you feel like you need to have a bit of a rant right now, feel free to. Another cool thing I did actually earlier this week was help uh, Valencia Football Club announce a new signing. Did you? Yeah. So I was literally... Um, yeah, so they they contacted me the day before and said and said Oliver, this 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 player is about to sign with us on loan for the rest of the season. Uh, how would you feel about helping us out? So I was like, yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, so I literally just did like a little talk thing about um, it was all a bit Potter esque, I suppose, and basically saying like, you know, this guy's a magician on the wing. <laughs> and then um, yeah, and then they they they. Uh, flipped it in, so I hope that uh, that Brian Gill does very very well there in uh, in Valencia for the rest of the season. Very much, Amund, 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 everybody. Anyway, moving on, guys. So we get to our story time. I'll tell you another thing. Actually, now we're talking about it. I went for a walk in the park yesterday, and you know when you know, fair enough. It's a natural. It's a big park, big reserve, and people can let their dogs off lead. Fair enough. Yep. But dog comes up to me. He's He's not, he's not a big dog, but he's muddy as anything. He's obviously been in the lake and in the rug and everything like that. And he's getting really, really close. And I'm like, all right, all right, yeah, yeah, okay. And I'm, I'm a dog person, but I didn't want to get muddy. And you know when, like, the, the owner is just like, oh, he, he's a people person. I was just like, right, can you move your dog, though? 
I didn't say this, but I'm just like still thinking like, okay, he's gonna, she's gonna call him away, gonna call him away, call him away. Bypasses me and jumps straight up on my mate. Hmm. Right, yeah, legs and can laugh. No, I know, I know, I know. But I was just like, and then the woman, right, who was um, who was owning the dog, who was walking with it, just said, "Oh, you're gonna have to clean those when you get in." That was it. There wasn't even an apology or anything like that. So, if you come across that situation, answers to the normal address, normal not normal pod, uh, podcast at gmail dot com. What would be the most dignified, correct response to such an event? Moving on, we get to our story times, and thank you once again to everyone who wrote in. And apologies if your story time uh, thing hasn't made it in this week, but do not fret. Uh, we still get lots and lots coming through, so no doubt we'll try and squeeze it in at some point. Anyway, our first story time comes from Lilina in Sweden. Hi, James and Oliver. My name is Lilina, and I'm from Sweden. I just want to say thank you for an amazing podcast and that you're amazing at what you do. My story is about my oldest sister, and she doesn't know that I'm telling you this, so if we could just keep this between us, it would be great. My sister was around three, four years old when this happened. She and my dad went out for a walk, and when they came to a small forest road, there was a snake laying on a rock and enjoying the sun. A normal person would just pass by and ignore it, but my sister did not. She approached it, took it by the tail, lifted it up, turned to my dad and said, Look, dad, what a huge worm! My dad panicked and told her to let it go carefully. Instead of doing so, she threw it away, so the snake flew through the air and landed somewhere in the grass. And my sister kept walking as if nothing had happened. I also have a question for you, if that's okay. We all know that Fred and George have their own joke shop, but if you had a chance to have your own shop, what kind of shop would it be and what would it be called? Thanks again for an amazing podcast. Stay safe and as we say in Swedish, Elskerien. Bye. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it though how um how uh, Lilina just said, Oh yeah, it's um you know, my sister doesn't know I'm telling you this, um, so please don't tell anyone. Well, we didn't tell anyone. But Thank everyone else sharing everybody it with everybody else. That was such an amazing story. Um, yeah, and I think that just shows the fearlessness of youth. Do you think the snake remembers it? Probably, he's probably got a headache. <laughs> just there sunbathing. Oh, look, here comes a little girl. Hello, little girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there we go. But anyway, no, that was, uh, that was a very good story. I don't think I've ever done anything like that. I remember when we were playing golf in um, Arizona. Can you remember? Oh, we were in buggies. Yeah, don't go and get. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Do you remember? No, I was going to say when you play when you play in like the the west side of of the states, it's quite deserty, and there's always signs saying if your ball goes off off the course, essentially into the desert, don't try and re- re- get it back because there's rattlesnakes everywhere. Mm, mm. No, and I yeah, was talking about. We learned. We I know, but we learned here. this. We learned this in when we're playing in Arizona when an actual rattlesnake rattled past. Big fella, yeah. Yeah, big. And actually, anyway, right. great yeah. question. Great question as well. So, if you could open a store, what would it be? I would open a store which is either. Can I have like a three? I'll have a, a three floored store. So basically, things that I'm interested in, and obviously, if it's a store, then you could get all your own stuff. So, ground floor would be Lego, as much as possible. And then I was watching. Have you ever seen Lego Masters as well? By the way, the TV program. I Incredible! Saw Australian one. I, saw, like, I, saw, I saw the Australian one the other day, and let's build this massive tower. It is insane, mad. Definitely recommend checking those out. Anyway, and I'll, I'll probably get one of those guys to um, as the employer of that department. So that, imagine if they're bored, just one day, just knock something together, and it's world class. Anyway, Lego will be on the ground floor. Middle floor would be um, cameras and telescopes and things like that, spacey stuff. 
Would that not be better on the top floor, though? So you could have a little skylight to try them out. Mm. Yeah, but they're heavy. Yeah. They're heavy things to get up and down. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and then we're not so we're practical. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, right, you could have like this, this amazing store and you could be like, oh, do you want to try this telescope out? Come at night time and then pull a lever or push a button and the roof just goes like that and you can just... You know. Yeah, true. Who wouldn't buy okay. that telescope? Okay, then I'll put that on the roof um, with a open, retractable roof. Um, and then the... Okay, so then now the middle floor would be a paddleboard shop. But, wow. but it would have its own pool, which mimics waves and things like that. So you could actually get in and try them. Shouldn't that be I mean, on the It's a big floor, shop. Then? No, because this makes it more interesting. What if you? What if? What if, if you've got your Lego designers? What? No, but I'm just saying. What if you've got your Lego designers and they're like, "What's that? Drip, drip." Well, then they can quickly build. Get some Lego up there. Bucket. Patch it. Patch it exactly. with some Lego. Done. There you go. There you go. That would be my store. Okay, excellent. Well, as I say, my store would uh, would be represent.com slash store slash normal, not normal. And thank you very much for everybody who's continued to buy our merchandise, by the way. It's great to see. Someone actually sent me a photo of people. All like, I've, I've had photos of them wearing it all over the world. I had one recently in front of Maca Pichu. That was cool. Really? <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah. Love it. Love hearing stuff like that. So, guys, yes, once again, thank you for all the, uh, all the support and everything like that. And moving on. So, James, have you got another story for us? Yeah, so our, f- our next story is from Reme in China. Hello, uh, Ni Hao. I'm going to share with you guys a funny story that happened a few weeks ago. So one night I woke up because I needed to go to the bathroom. When I was done and ready to go back to my lovely bed, I heard my dad shouting in his bedroom. Help me catch that thief, he shouted. I could hear all the sounds of running footsteps. I panicked and thought that someone had broken into the house, so I ran back to my room and locked the door, thinking my dad could deal with it on his own. The next day, my dad didn't even mention the break-in. So when I asked him about it, he acted surprised and said he didn't remember it at all. Finally, my mum told me that my dad talks in his sleep. So, there were no thieves... And those footsteps were probably just my border collie dog running around. That was when I first learned about sleep talking. So (laughs) thank you very much for listening to my story, she said. But also, James and Oliver, do either of you talk in your sleep? I don't think so. I think it's been known. It has been known to normally if I've come back from something like a, um, a sporting event or something like that and you're still quite in the in the moment in the celebratory moment or something like that and maybe you put yourself in that position i think that's been there but i think everyone's done something like that have they not i think so i remember going to football seeing my team win the win the cup and um in bed that night i accidentally pushed my wife out of bed because i was celebrating again in my seat Mm -hmm. still gets mentioned um but (laughs) I, i i don't really talk that i don't think i talk that much in my sleep but I know, so actually my wife's mate, who I won't name to protect the innocent, I did hear that she sleep talks. and But her, she only says the same thing over and over again, especially if she's startled and wakes up. And so she just, she just wakes up going, night, 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 night. Which, <laughs> could you imagine if someone broke into your house and someone started screaming, night, 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 night. It's, Has she got a part of good diff- well, it's quite a good defence mechanism, isn't it? No, I mean, has she got a partner, though? Like, yeah, yeah. Share the better. Yeah. Could you imagine the first time they hear that? That'd be... Had to come with a warning, wouldn't it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, we've had some stories from Sweden, from China, and now we go to Mumbai in India from Harsh Chowdhury, who says, I have had a different childhood to many of my friends due to my interest in space and robotics. I founded a company in my eighth grade and another one in my 11th to solve real life problems with technology. Two years ago, my business partner, who's also my dad, and I went to a meeting. When we arrived, the person we were meeting saw me and said to my dad in a cute voice, oh, you brought your son with you. No problem. I'll get him a chair and he can sit in the waiting room. My dad then told me that actually it was his son who owned the company and that we were there to talk about, not him. I then went on to lead the entire business meeting. 
and we have a picture of Hash, which everyone can see. So there's Hash. Could you, I mean, well done, Hash, first of all, for just sticking with it. And then when someone just looks at you like, oh, no, that's just a little boy. But, mate, that is absolutely incredible. It's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? That is awesome, mate. That is awesome. Well, I hope the meeting went really well, and especially being able to blend your your passion with robotics and with science and just uh, and just to move that forward. So I really hope that all went very successful for you. And uh, yeah, isn't that, isn't that awful when stuff like that happens, when people perceive you, uh, be it based on your age or something like that? Like, I remember I bought my first house um, when I was relatively, relatively young, fortunate to do that. And uh, I remember every time someone would knock on the door, like a cold caller would come to the door and they'd be like, you're right, mate, your mum and dad in? No. Okay, shut the door. So there's always a benefit to it. And I'm sure, Hush, I'm sure that he was able to, the man actually saw you and then by the end of the meeting was so blown away by what you were saying, he probably took it a lot more on board than had you uh, had you just turned up. Or even worse, if you'd have listened to him or if your dad wasn't that strong-minded and just said, no, actually, actually, he has to be here. Um, and that, he, that your dad didn't just try and wing it on his own. So well done, matey, for doing all that. Very much so. Uh, Hash, congratulations again on the company. It's absolutely fantastic. And thank you very much for sharing that with us. And I guarantee that certain gentleman must have felt yay big when your dad said that, especially then when you came in and started bossing it. So huge congratulations. And I really do hope that your company go on to success and success and success. And we hear lots more about it in the future. So thank you so much for listening. Yeah, and maybe, maybe James, when you when you build your store, you can have a uh, a, a part maybe in the uh, the third level for it, the hash floor, the hash floor. Yeah, there you go. Now on to the questions. So this question is from Mariana, and she asks, if you were a character in a horror film, do you think you would make it to the end? Right, I I would like to think I would, but here's why: I would like to play a character in a horror film who just isn't absolute like who doesn't actually who isn't the bad guy who isn't the good guy but he's quite happy to let other people like he tries to be like someone who plays like really good intentions but really he's just a wimp and just is quite happy to run out and it becomes darwinism you don't have to be the fastest you just can't be the slowest be that character very much so um so i was so, like what a horrible bloke not really so um, I've so I've I've done a couple of horror films and I think I've died in all of them, so I'd like to keep that going. <laughs> what was your worst death in one of them? Um, I remember one. I was shot, and literally I was trying to save the the main character, and the last line was, "Oh, that really wasn't worth it," and he dies. That is spoiler alert, by the way. Yeah, but it was quite a good line oh, to go out. No. I thought, um, but but I, I I I mean, I really enjoy horror films when there's because every time it's always there's a creepy house somewhere in the middle of the woods, a smoke filling everything, and it's really creepy. And they think, hmm, let's go in there. Like, mm. why why the hell mm. would you ever do that? But I think that's what you say in every horror film because you know exactly what's coming, and it's always the silliest person normally ends up copping it first don't they so yeah yeah i always think there's there was there was always two i remember from years ago what really like messed me up watching horror films for a while one was the the ring right. messed up and don't the, the, the tv on static and there's the two versions of it as well there's like the more modern version of it but there's also the original version of the hills have eyes don't know if you ever seen that mm-hmm. uh, it's messed up but again yeah. again as you say the silly people kind of cop it first I always, uh, if you've ever seen Final Destination, or I think it's Final Destination 2, I think it is. It's a good film. Very fun. Well, I found it hilarious, actually, just like the random deaths which happen to the characters. Um, but there's a scene when they're in New... I think they're, well, they're walking past a, a building. And, you know, especially in New York, they have the fire escapes outside with the ladders and they're outside the building. Oh, yes, when he slips on the Basically, one of those kills someone. Awesome. And to this day, if I'm ever around that, I never walk under them. No. It's a bit no, like, it's a bit like going back to like Final in, Destination. Yeah. It's a bit like when say. there's a logging lorry, uh, a truck carrying loads of logs. Yeah. You'll only ever see, the only people driving behind that thing are people who have never seen that movie. Well, I was watching, right? I, I was driving in Oregon a couple of years ago, and it took me ages to get anywhere because of the distance I was leaving, because there's that many lorry 
uh, lorries pulling with like all the logs and everything on the back of them. It took me forever to get anywhere around there, and I based that purely on the notion of that movie. Very good. There you go. There you go. But anyway, yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> so moving on to a bit of a more, I suppose, uh, normal question, uh, which, is, which comes from Haley, and Haley asks, "What pets did you guys have when growing up?" Well, we had we had a couple, I suppose, more than anything. We had fish. I say couple. We had two two types. We had fish and we had dogs. So the dogs we always had, uh, what mum and dad always have, are uh, the breed bearded collies. And uh, we had a couple of those growing up. There was Tom, there was Jerry, there was Ewan, there was Sevy, there was Roop, and there is Tonto now. So they're the, uh, they're the, the beardies from it. And then we had two fish as well. Now, when we, were, when we were growing up, there was a really popular kids like crime cartoon about these fish called Sharky and George. Crime busters of the sea, and uh, anyway, so we uh, we ended up watching uh, that quite a lot. So we got this these goldfish, and we had Sharky and George. And funny enough, George, right, being a goldfish, haha. Many years later, um, and then George never. He oh, was I just like, got you on about there. Sorry, I completely. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Well done. Um, and then George was actually about nine or ten when he, he eventually died, which for a goldfish had, is very good. But it actually he had turned a good out... innings. I know. It actually well, turned no, out... Well, no, no, because Sharky, Sharky didn't survive for long. <laughs> Sharky but then the week, did he? <laughs> he had enough. George, George <laughs> survived, like we said, years. And he kept changing shape and size every so often, and his colour changed a little bit. He was like... Hmm. Like a moving... Th- well, obviously, he's a moving fish. Um, but eventually... we just, And then one, one day, eventually, George succumb to uh inevitability uh and anyway he had a really good innings anyway it turned out for years my dad kept replacing george with another george because he didn't Mm. want us to know that george had uh had gone gone um Mm. so so that's why so yeah that was a, a nice little thing but then actually when we're talking about dogs as well the dogs that we had can i tell the one ewan story so one? the one so the one beard we had ewan he was an absolute lunatic very loyal dog but he did what he wanted he was very much a he was a very he was too he was very very cle- like incredibly clever like he so beard is a natural sheep dogs even though we never taught him Talking about dogs off the lead in the park. Remember when he herded up the <laughs> yeah. farmer with the cows once? And so the farmer's like, can yeah. you call him back and stop him? He's like, we have no idea what he's doing. He's literally like crouching towards them and herding them in a perfect circle. It's quite cool to watch. Anyway, um, and he would, t- he would squeaky toys. He would go and sit in the garden. He would literally speak to the birds. And we figured, Yeah, he would do it. Yeah. Yeah, we literally figured he was doing that for a, a while. And also you'd hear the birds tweeting back and he'd start squeaking back at them and back and forth. Quite incredible. Anyway, Ewan, he held a grudge. And also, when he was muddy, he didn't want to be left left in the kitchen. So one day he was staying at our house and he came in from the garden very muddy. And I said to him, OK, you're going to have to stay in the garden, in the kitchen just for a, a couple of minutes just so you can dry off. As I was trying to leave the room, he barged past me and ran through the house, muddy paws everywhere. I was very cross and I told him off. And he kind of like looked at me, you know, what are you going to do? Anyway, that night, so I, I, tried, I tried to uh, do the thing of ignoring him to show I'm, I'm mad at him. Oliver was a soft touch and you knew this. So he knew he, knew he had an I ally was, in so, me. So I was in my bed one night. I was fast asleep. And all of a sudden I hear the door open and I see you and plod in. I was like, hello, you and you and then decides to cock his leg at my bed. Before I know what's going on, I'm like, what the? so I jump out of bed. I chase after him to stop him. I then find you, and he's in Oliver's room, with his like pretending to be asleep, but his one eye is open, looking at me. Very clever dog, and oh, held a grudge. So yeah, that was, he was the story of our yeah, pets he was uh, yeah, and he was he was one of these lads, as you say, he was um, very personable dog, and I'm sure a lot a lot of people who've got who've got pets like that find that. Uh, find that with them but with me he was just like as as James said he was a very intelligent lad and uh, even to the point where there was times when so we were all I was away filming and my 
uh, my wife, um, we weren't married at the time, but she was, I said, oh, do you mind watching the dogs? Mum and dad are away. Uh, do you mind do you mind watching him so she said okay yeah i said but he can be a bit funny if we go on like walks and stuff like that so just just be aware okay and then end of the week i come back from filming i said oh how how was he 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 was fine he was just like no problem at all so we sat down watching a film on the tv so obviously on the tv so we sat down in the front room watching a film and ewan walks in and i'm going to use this usb just for as a thing and he walks in literally with a um a padlock from somewhere i don't know where he's got this padlock from and just sits in front of the TV, puts it down on his paws as if to say, I know I'm not supposed to have this. You know I'm not supposed to have this. What are you going to do? And it was almost this case of, right, I'm still here type thing. Um, yeah, and I love it's personalities like, like that. Yeah, but he would like nick the remote and go and sit under a table and just yeah. look at you. And then if you go near him, you'd see the <laughs> teeth the teeth come up. <laughs> anyway, dog people. Anyway, yes, so that was, <laughs> that was our pets. Um, the next question is from Michaela Spitler. Um, so Michaela asks, if you could live anywhere in the world with expenses paid, of course, where would you live? Great mm. question. I've been giving this a lot of thought. I would prob... I mean, I, I'd have to live near the sea. But if I could live anywhere, it would be near the sea so I could... It'd have to be some that's the thing that's the thing i think 50 50 i'd like because i like where i live now in the summer in the winter i can't stand it so probably somewhere nice like i don't know melbourne gets very hot in the summer though somewhere like that. i know i've been there it's great it's absolutely brilliant can't go skiing in melbourne though that's fine by me it's fine <laughs> maybe oh oh I would go and say, hang on, where's, where's my globe? I'm going to spin the globe. I'd like my own private island in the Exumas in the Bahamas. Oh, right, okay. All expenses paid if I could live anywhere. Why? So and if, never... if we're Is that the one with the paid? pigs? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, but then there's no cricket. They're swimming pig. When I, when I say they're the ones with the pigs, they, these like these pigs that swim. St. Lucia was cool. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. That was really cool. Actually, I've got, I've got one I could recommend, uh, which I'd love to live for a little bit. Austin, Texas. Yes. Good music scene, good weather, decent golf, decent ale, good barbecue, and, uh, yeah. Tax breaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, good idea. Anyway, anyway, before this gets a bit semi-political, uh, we're going to move on now. Um, to uh, Did You Knows and the first one uh, comes from Catherine from Brittany in France Bonjour Catherine and uh, she says Did you know in French there is an app called Chizam which helps you recognise different cheeses so it's a bit like I assume it's like Shazam only instead of oh wow I love this tune what is it it's I love that love that cheese what is it great I assume you take a photo you don't just put the microphone next to it and it can each cheese Smell has it. a different Just sound. Wafts it. Yeah. That'd be Very good. good. That'll be good. But how does that work? I wonder how that works. Does it have to be in like perfect squares or written around out of the out of the wax and everything? They're pretty clever, aren't they? I've, I've, I'm sad enough. I've got an app which tells me what flowers are what. Yeah, yeah. I've got a wine one. It's a good one. It pairs you up with different cheeses, actually. Yeah. The next one good. is from. The next, did you know, is from Viola from China. And she says, did you know that this year is the year of the tiger in the Chinese traditional calendar? And according to the 12 Chinese zodiac signs, both of your Chinese zodiac animal is also the tiger. I like that. In Chinese culture, it is unlucky to be in your animal year. So protect (laughs) them from this. People wear something red. He says wearing something blue. Because in our yeah. culture, red stands for justice, bravery, and luck. Just like Gryffindor. Well, there you go. Thank you very much, Viola. That was a, I've, a very I've got good some red. I've got some and, red on me today. There you are. You've got that. And can I also say, Ge Ni Hao to everybody in China. I think I pronounced that right. Happy New Year to you. I hope you all had a fantastic first time, well, the first of the celebrations earlier in the week. And I hope that the many days well it's like a month tradition isn't it for everybody so i hope you have a good time so i thought i could share my little did you know fact about 
uh, Chinese New Year. Okay, since it is. So like most Westerners say Merry Christmas and everything like that for, for Christmas time, um, Ge Nia Hao is, means Happy New Year in Chinese, right? Um, so the whole story behind it and why the celebration, why they call it Gu Nia is, so Nia, please hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, is the Chinese word for year. And in folk culture, the sp it's also known as the Spring Festival. Right? So the Spring Festival celebration is also called Gu Nian, meaning passing a year. And in the Chinese New Year story, Nie is a fierce and cruel monster which eats livestock and children. But it is scared of the red color red and cracker sounds. So therefore, people use red decorations and fireworks to drive it away. Yeah. Uh, happy Chinese New Year, happy Spring Festival to the one-sixth of the world's population that celebrate this. And I know that it is the longest public holiday and the whole country is on the move there, especially in China. And did you know that people try and get home to where they're from and with their families? So it's a lot like Christmas or Thanksgiving in the States. Everybody is trying to get home to be with their family. And this makes it the world's largest annual migration known as the Spring Festival Travel Rush. And the total trips, right, made by planes, trains, automobiles, boats, everything, can reach nearly three billion journeys. Yeah. There we are. So, guys, I hope that the travel isn't too bad. I hope that you don't have any screaming children next to you. I hope you don't have any snoring people next to you. Uh, I hope that everybody there has washed correctly. <laughs> I'm just going to throw this, my pet hates of when I'm trying. I was going to say, well, I was going to, I was going to add on for that, that many. Hopefully, if you if you've managed to choose anything that's slightly greener as well to get around, that's obviously uh, going to help. Well, I think help some everyone. people do do walk home, don't they? If they can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of take your bike. There's a lot of coming out of uh, around for. Such but yeah, a so anyway, of time. guys, thank you very much for all your did you knows, your stories, uh, your questions. I hope you've had a good time listening to this one. We've had a great one recording it. And Valentine's Day is coming up. So the next uh, listener participation episode will be around Valentine's Day. And some of you might be looking forward to it. Some of you might be dreading it. Some of you might not care one bit. Either way, send us your Valentine's Day themed stories uh, to the normal address, which is normal, not normal podcast at gmail.com. That's normal, not normal podcast at gmail.com. And we can have a bit of fun with that. Yes, we want to hear both your good and not so good uh, Valentine's Day stories. I'm trying to think I might have a bad one anyway to throw out there at some point. Um, but yeah, anyway, maybe, maybe I'll save the rant. Maybe I'll save a rant for next week's for next week's episode. We'll see. Anyway, guys, join us for the next episode of Normal Not Normal next time. Thank you so much for your uh, your accompanying us today on today's random journey. And as I've said before, I'm Oliver Phelps. And I'm James Phelps. Like you said, thank you so much for listening with us, supporting us. And we really do hope that you'll have an amazing rest of your week. Take care. Bye-bye.